On the last series of Super Size vs Super Skinny, we saw eight underweight and overweight people check into this feeding clinic for a radical five-day diet swap. By swapping meals, they were forced to confront the issues they had with their diets. I just felt really sick. And sometimes the truth hurt. And you wonder why the size you do what? Look at it. Guiding them through the process was Dr. Christian Jessen, who prescribed them all a harsh dose of reality. If you carry on like this, you are going to end up in a box in the ground. After Dr. Jessen's three-month diet plan, we saw eight super skinnies pile on a combined weight of three stone, and the supersized lost a whopping 16 stone. Yes! One year on, we'll catch up with super skinny Kevin and super size Stefan to see if their five day diet swaps were enough to teach them lifelong lessons. I feel healthier in myself. First time in 15 years that weight has come off. We'll also look back at how journalist Anna Richardson went to great lengths to expose the truth about extreme diets. Wow, 94 centimetres. It was 99 before. That is incredible. This is Super Size versus Super Skinny. One year on. Microscopic Kevin is a super skinny, desperate to pile on some pounds. I've got to that point where I do think that I am probably the lowest weight that I've been, and that I am probably too thin, and that I obviously do want to build up a little bit. Kevin will be spending a week in this feeding clinic, overseen by Dr Christian Jessen. Kevin's undergone a full medical to make sure he's fit for purpose. About five foot nine and a half. An average man of five foot nine and a half inches should weigh 11 stone. Eight and a half stone. Which means that Kevin is two and a half stone underweight. Worries me a little bit because I didn't realise that I was that thin. You've got no body fat on you whatsoever. Nothing. I don't have the time to eat with the lifestyle that I lead because I have two jobs. I'm literally always really busy and just miss meals because of that and just suppress it. Kevin, originally from Doncaster, moved to Brighton two years ago. Along with his new life has come responsibilities. With rent and bills to pay, Kevin holds down two jobs. This hectic life means no time for proper meals. It's to do with my manic lifestyle, the reason why I don't eat. It's not on my radar all the time, really. I don't actually realise it till later on that day that I've actually not eaten anything. His day job in a department store means an early start. Breakfast is the usual, a coffee and a fag. He almost never eats breakfast. I, uh, usual, please. Seven hours later is lunch, with just a pit stop to a cafe for his favourite, a scrambled egg sandwich and a coffee. Even his first meal of the day isn't really enjoyed. He wolves down what he can and gives Brighton's other residents the rest. After work, there's no time for dinner, as Kevin needs to get to job number two, as a barman in the local pub. I'm always on the go. I, d I don't like sitting down really for long periods of time. Um, just my lifestyle's really affected my diet, really. After a whopping 16 hours at work and only an egg sandwich, dinner is only an orange juice. A long time without any actual proper food in my body. And what am I doing to myself? But someone who does make plenty of time in her day for food is Julie, Kevin's nemesis. She's a super-sizing 26 stone. I find it strange how an underweight person could eat nothing. You know, it just seems strange to me because I eat so much. Julie's got just four days to teach Kevin the joys of eating. And by sizing down to his portions, Julie's own weight problem will be tackled once and for all. 370 pounds. Yeah. These two are polar opposites when it comes to dangerous extreme eating. Their bodies screen the results. Julie's waist is more than twice the size of Kevin's. What she doesn't know is that she's literally busting a gut. You've got a hernia as well, haven't you? 
Is that what that is? Yeah. So you've got two muscles here and here. Huh? And they've got weak and they've gone to the side. And everything else in your gut is sort of pushing out. And that's what that is. As you lose weight and you get a bit fitter and your muscles tone up and things, it'll get better. With an 18 stone weight difference, these two are here to teach each other hard lessons in food and nutrition. By swapping diets, they will be shocked into facing their own body issues and hopefully change their relationship with food for good. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. Hello. Hi. Pleased to meet you. I'm Julie. I'm from Harlow in Essex. I'm Kevin. I come from Brighton. Are you nervous? Um, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, I weigh... Eight and a half stone. I weigh 26 stone three. Very slim, isn't it? Yeah. Mine's so almost double, double it? cos yeah. like yours looks like, um, like really little. Have you always been that way? Yeah. I would associate an underweight person to be more uh, a woman, really, yeah. rather than a man. I found it quite shocking, just, you know, how skinny he was. Tiny, you know, no fat on him whatsoever. Julie will be trying to add curves to Kevin by handing over her meals for the next few days. To show them exactly what they've got to stomach, Dr. Jessen's going to demonstrate what a week's worth of their food looks like. It's time now for us to have a look at exactly what it is you've been eating. Kevin's up first with a week's worth of his teeny tiny breakfasts. With your cigarettes, you use them as a substitute for food. Cigarettes suppress your appetite, so that's how you can get through a morning without eating, but your body is suffering because of it. That looks like egg yeah, something. Yeah, scrambled egg, 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 egg sandwich. What's that? Oh, look. Cho chocolate More crisps. chocolate, more crisps. And as yet, I haven't seen anything green. Is that it? In an entire week. Kevin, with his busy lifestyle, should be consuming 2,700 calories a day, but he's only getting 2,150, which is an under-eat of nearly two days' worth of food a week. I can't believe there's not one cooked meal there, Kevin. You know that's not good, don't you? Not good at all. I like hot cross buns. I tend to have a couple of them in the morning. With what? Um, butter and jam. It comes with full English. Yeah. So it is basically two breakfasts that yeah. you're getting through, isn't it? How many cups of tea would you have a day? About six to eight. I worked out that if you combine your sugar intake, your butter intake, and the milk that you use, that's about 1,500 calories a day. Just in that. The average woman needs 2,000 calories a day. Julie is consuming a staggering 5,000. That's 35,000 a week, which is a jaw-dropping overeat of 10 and a half days' food every week. It's quite alarming how much food she does actually eat. Still to come, we meet our largest supersizer from Series 1, 34 stone Stefan. That is the highest body mass I have ever seen. Anna Richardson tries to swap her apple shape for the apple diet. I'm going to be really hungry in about 12 minutes time. And we visit super skinny Kevin and super sized Stefan a year after they first entered the feeding clinic. Super skinny, eight and a half stone Kevin, who's got no time for proper meals, has swapped diets with super sized 26 stone Julie. It's their first night in the feeding clinic, and Kevin's dinner is about to get super sized. Do you like orange? Oh, is that what I'm getting? <laughs> Kevin's dinner is his pub special four orange juices. I can't believe that. Four orange juices for his dinner. It, it totally amazes me. Fruit juice contains vitamin C, which is an important antioxidant, helping to protect the cells in your body and boost your immune system. However, it should be consumed alongside a meal, not as a replacement for a meal. It contains a high level of sugar, which can affect insulin levels. In large quantities, it can also rot your teeth. Check the labels carefully and buy 100% fruit juice with no added sugar. Kevin is struggling with his mountain of mashed potato. It's just too much bloody food on the plate. All this food swimming around in mountains of gravy. You need to start getting some weight on you. <sighs> you finished now, then? Yeah. I feel really bloated and my stomach sort of hurts a little bit and feel like I've still got a bit of potato at the back of my throat or something. Um, so, not that all pleasant. 
Day two begins with an early snack for Kevin. One tea with three sugars and three rounds of toast with full fat butter and jam. But this is only Julie's first breakfast. Breakfast number two is a belly busting two crumpets with butter and jam and a bowl of sugar puffs with full fat milk. How much food? And for Julie, who's still waiting for her first proper meal of the diet swap, there's only a bar of chocolate. I wonder what my next bit of food is going to be. Lunch brings some hope for Julie as Kevin cooks up his signature dish. For me, this toasted sandwich with scrambled egg in the middle mm. is absolute heaven. Unbelievable. You are way under eating. And you're a man as well. You should way be eating more than this sandwich. For Kevin, it's more carbs. A white bread sandwich with full fat cheddar cheese. Oh, and a little salad. It's the first thing you would have eaten then in two days. I just would have thought this meal would have been a lot bigger. But you've rolled that down. And I didn't even enjoy it. Kevin is finding Julie's diet hard to handle. <laughs> Julie's snacks alone are over 1,200 calories a day. Next up, Kevin faces a three-course dinner. So what have I got for dinner tonight? Four orange juice and lemonade again. Unbelievable. For Kevin, he's facing the meal of his life. Julie's prepared some of her old favourites, stuffed potato skins, chicken and chips, and a spotted dick and custard. It tastes really nice in such a way. Mm. Despite another liquid dinner for Julie, she's still able to show Kevin some motherly love. I really can't believe, Kevin, you're not having a dinner again. This isn't a diet, is it? This is starvation. It was another night when I was working at the pub. This isn't normal, Kevin. You know what I mean? But nothing, you're but because of my life... No, it's not an excuse. Because of my you lifestyle, are. I physically can't. Oh. Rubbish. Is this because you're a little bit hungry, though, as well? Do you know what it have. is? Because you're winding me up. I'm not making excuses. Right, do you want your other thing that you can have? Well, no, because this is my dinner, isn't it? No, you've got another surprise oh, as well. Um, you don't drink, but I can offer you anyway. At the end of my shift anyway, right. yeah. I would get a Blue Wicked. Would you like one? Oh, I don't know. I don't, well, that's not food, is it? Why not treat yourself? How is that a treat? A treat is a big fat cream cake. That it's ain't not. a treat. Kevin leads a really hectic life, but he lives on around half his recommended calorie intake. Right, Kevin, come along with me. I'm hoping that the photo gallery will show him that his under-eating will have serious consequences on his body. What do you think? My bone there and the bone there really sticks out on that picture. You don't have great skin, do you? No. You have no fresh fruit and vegetables whatsoever. You have virtually no vitamin C on your diet, apart from that occasional orange juice, you know, after you've finished work. If you are under-eating, you could increase your chances of getting acne, as you could be missing out on zinc and vitamin C. What about these pickies? Not a lot of flesh on you, is there? You know, I know there's a look, and there's a look to be slim, but this has gone a little bit too far, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, you have a really busy lifestyle. You're working two jobs, but you're going to need some energy to get you through that long term. You know, if you get ill, what's going to happen? Being severely underweight may mean you have a weaker immune system that can leave you susceptible to other illnesses. I think this is the worst picture because you're just so incredibly slim. There's nothing there, is yeah. there? I mean, this one really alarms me seeing this one up big because obviously you can see where my bone is there. My veins are really, really prominent. Your veins are really prominent because you have absolutely no body fat whatsoever. It is just skin there, isn't it? Look how you can see. It's when it's actually in a big picture like that that you actually... You realise. You realise how bad it really is. Last series, Super Size vs Super Skinny asked me, Anna Richardson, a journalist and failed cereal dieter, to spend eight weeks trying out some of the most extreme diets on the market. Bon appetit. The mug I am. I agreed. My tummy really hurts. Seriously, please go away. And along the way, there was some pummeling. You see that? And at times puking. But was it all worth it? I've lost a pound. Well, join me as I look back on all the extreme measures I went to. First up, I attempted to swap my apple shape for the apple diet. 
Like most women, I'm constantly bombarded with mixed messages about dieting, detox and dropping a dress size in a week. Women are obsessed with being slim and I'm certainly no different. Wheat-free, Atkins, cabbage soup, you name it, I've done it. But I'm still a size 14 and I guess I'm carrying a few extra pounds. I reckon I'm about ten and a half stone-ish, so... OK. No way! I'm 11 and a half stone. Like no other flawless. Like 84% of women in the UK, I wish I was slimmer. We're a nation obsessed. And to be honest, which one of us wouldn't want to look like her? One of these days. My thighs. Better than yours. So how do these models stay so super skinny? Is it really all cigarettes and black coffee? I'm meeting up with ex-model Gemma Clark, who's promised to let me in on a bizarre model diet. I was told um, once to try the apple diet. The, the apple diet? Yes. Right, OK, so what does this consist of, can I guess? Just eating apples. OK, so, so, so not healthy. any kind of particular apple or...? No, I think, you know, free reign. If it gets the catwalk queens back into the size zeros before a show, then what will it do for me? Right, I'm going to have to clear out my cupboards if I'm going to be only eating apples because this is going to be too much of a temptation. <laughs> Farewell, old friends. Till we meet again. Oh, what? Well, I'm going to get really bored, really bored of eating these. My tummy's rumbling already. I'm going to be really hungry in about 12 minutes' time. A week later and 40 apples down, I've lost a pound. My dismal weight loss led me to my favourite restaurant. <laughs> Tell you what, apple diet, mission failed. After my first failed mission, I began to think maybe dieting wasn't the way to go. I wanted a quick fix solution that would ditch my fat without ditching my food. I ease myself in gently by having a deep abdominal massage that actually shed seven centimetres from my waist. OK, so we're at 83 centimetres. 83? 83 centimetres. And we were at 90 before. That is incredible. But it also played havoc with my toilet habits. I have just done the biggest poo known to mankind. Then I decided to do something more drastic and I underwent surgery. It was a minimal invasive procedure called laser lipo, but halfway through the surgery they had to halt proceedings as I found it too painful. You see that? I'm now left with bad arm, good arm, fat arm, thin arm. So surgery wasn't the answer either. But I wasn't prepared to give up, and my quest continued with a mixture of mad diets. Join me later to find out what was also on my hit list. The second person we're meeting is supersized Stefan Ginesi. He's been morbidly obese for the past 10 years, and he's a foodaholic. 36-year-old Stefan is a milkman who has a serious love affair with food. Oh, I have a very wonderful relationship with food. We're together most times. With 3 a.m. starts, his feeding frenzy begins with an early morning trip to the local bakery. Oh, the smell of Danish pastry and the bread, and it just, it, it just has me at hello. And I, that starts my day off, and from then on, it's, it's just a downhill tread to destruction. Sausage rolls and cheese, big cream finger bun, and it would feast on crisps and coke and scone and anything that's eatable that's in my road is just doomed. But his overeating is standing in the way of any real passion in his life. I think when you're talking about relationships, when you're this size, if you can't love yourself, you're not going to invite anyone into your life to love you. Over the next five days, Stefan will be swapping diets with 41-year-old super skinny Elizabeth Young. She weighs in at just six stone two pounds and sees food in a very different light to Stefan. I don't have a bond with food. I can take it or leave it. I'm not emotionally connected to food. To me, I, I see food like petrol. 
in a sense that you only put petrol in a car when the car needs it. So I put food into my body when I need it. It's now time for Dr. Jessen to work out the scale of Stefan's problem. You are 485 pounds exactly. That's a whopping 34 stone 9 pounds, nearly three times heavier than his recommended weight. Okay. Stefan's waist is more than three times the size of Elizabeth's. I've worked out your body mass to be 67. That is the highest body mass I have ever seen in anybody. We would call morbidly obese a body mass of about 50. Morbidly obese means heading for an early grave. You ain't gonna make 40. I'm not ready for Dan yet. Uh-uh. I've got life in me yet. I've got a drive in me. I want to see my niece grow up. I've just, I want to live. They say opposites attract, so with a 28 stone difference and contradictory views on food, could this diet swap be a marriage made in heaven or in hell? Well, we're about to find out. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. I'm Stefan. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi. How, are you? How are you? I'm all right. Good well, look where we have found ourselves, eh? Oh, my goodness me. So, I'm really, really big. I'm and really small, eh, tell me. Well, 34 stone of wow. sheer... You don't look 34 stone. Do I not look 34 no. stone? That's fantastic. Do I look 34 stone now? Um, it looks you like wear this. it well. Thanks very much. Before Dr. Jessen can enlarge Elizabeth and slenderize Stefan, he needs to open their eyes to their extreme eating. This is what you tend to get through in a week for your breakfast. Let's have a look. So this is your dried cereal, because you don't have milk with it. You have orange juice, that's the banana. Half a banana. And I bet there's some nuts coming in, because I remember you have Brazil nuts Brazil as well, nuts, don't yeah. you? That's an entire week's worth of breakfast. Let's move on to lunches now. Do you like garlic? No. Oh, dear. Rice? You like your turkey curry type things, don't you? And pasta. Could I just say something? Absolutely. I yes. had no idea I was eating so much. <laughs> you think that's a lot of food? It's a lot of food. Elizabeth may think this is a large amount of food, but she's only eating a shockingly meagre 1,000 calories a day. This means she's under eating by 7,000 calories a week, or three and a half days worth of food. I want to turn and have a look at what it is Stefan eats. Let's go. Sausage rolls, nice start to the day. What's that? Scones. Scones, yes. OK. That's sausages. Cheese. Sausages. Is this sort of 10 a.m. breakfast? Where are we up to? 8 a.m.? You're into the burger section. Here come your snacks, by the way. Crisps, family-sized bags of chocolate and sweets. How much colour would you drink during the day? <sighs> Maybe two, three pints. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Ever had Irish stew? No. no. You're going to love it. Um, I've never had it like that either. I don't even know where we're up to. I'm completely lost with you. But it's, I'm a, lost myself, it's a constant yeah. intake of huge, huge quantities of food. Stefan is gobbling down a whopping 8,590 calories a day. That's 60,130 a week, which is an overeat of 16 days every week. Good luck, Elizabeth. Do you want a spoon? Day one of the diet swap, and Stefan has his first encounter with Elizabeth's diet. Oh, what have we got there, Elizabeth, young lady? Recognise anything? Oh, no, I recognise the banana. There's these are prunes. Oh, I haven't seen them from, it was about nine. And these are Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts, I haven't seen them since there was chocolate on them. So. And for Elizabeth, it's a saturated fat delight. Two sausage rolls on white baps with cheese, lashings of butter and double mayo, all washed down with a glass of Coke. OK, tell my mama lover. The dried prunes feels like I've just reached in to the waste disposal and took out some big, dirty old tea bags. I don't necessarily like Brazil nuts or prunes, but they serve a purpose, so I eat them. Okay. If Stefan thought the prunes were bad, that was only the tip of the iceberg. Whilst he dishes up a hearty shepherd's pie for Elizabeth, he gets chicken and rice sprinkled with her signature ingredient. Four cloves of raw garlic. OK. Oh. But the garlic is medicinal. Yeah, 
it's it's medicinal, all right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I could find another word for it, but it, it didn't do nothing for me. It didn't stimulate me. It didn't give me a drive. It didn't give me a kick, but it gave me a taste in my mouth, uh, much like sucking a two p would give you a taste in your mouth. Still to come, Anna Richardson continues her quest to lose weight by stepping into the shoes of a celebrity. And we'll find out if super skinny Kevin and super size Stefan have finally conquered their failings with food. My best friend turned around and actually said, can you actually fit any more on your plate? Super skinny Kevin, who is two and a half stone underweight, has swapped diets with super sized 26 stone Julie. It's breakfast on day three of their swap, and Julie uses her motherly persuasion to get Kevin to eat a proper breakfast. She presents him with a full English. But do you ever have a fry up? Yeah, but really, really, very rarely. So this is like what I've got for breakfast eight biscuits. You sit there and eat eight biscuits. Could easily put a couple of bits of toast in or put, do yourself a bowl of cereal. But as usual, you're sitting there eating every single bit. Look at it, and you wonder why you're the size that you are. But you're still eating it. I'm not saying, I'm, it's not about me for a second. Mm. You say this, but every single morning you've had really like full meals first thing in the morning. And, and you, you know do, do you wonder why the size you are, no, though? Do you know what? By why? And every single morning you've eaten it. Have you enjoyed that then? It's all right. Yeah. Enjoy your biscuits. If someone cooked you three or four meals a day, you would sit there and eat every one of them. No? Can we stop? I need the toilet. I don't mean to moan at him. He can moan at me just as much for being the size I am, but I just think he needs to understand that, um... He's got to stop making them excuses first. You all right? Yeah, have you finished your biscuits yet? No, nearly. I've upset you. No, 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 no. I just need no. What's the matter? Nothing. Serious? What's the matter? Is it hitting home a bit? Yeah. I am realising about myself and realising that I am after going to make some changes when I do go back home to my own life. If you are underweight and are looking for some tips to fatten up, here are some golden rules. Always eat breakfast, ideally high in carbohydrate. Eat three healthy snacks a day to have in between your meals. Drink one and a half to two litres of liquid, ideally this should be mostly water. Include good amounts of lean protein in your lunch and dinners. Exercise, as it helps to build muscle. The government recommends five 30-minute workouts a week. At lunchtime, supersized Julie is still waiting to eat a proper meal. For Kevin, it's a full-fat cheese and tomato sandwich <laughs> with thick oven chips. And for Julie, it's only a fizzy drink. You know, in three days, I've worked out I've had eight bourbon biscuits and a scrambled egg sandwich. <sighs> it's scary, I know it is. It's awful. I could really eat that in a moment. It was really nice. It looks really nice. <laughs> Unbelievable. You just filmed that, didn't you? <laughs> oh, disgusting. That is really good noise. <laughs> It's the final meal in the feeding clinic, and Kevin's in for a treat as Julie has cooked up roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, and all the trimmings. Unbelievable. And Julie can't believe her luck. After four days of just snack food, she's finally getting her first real meal, scampi and chips. So, our last meal. Say the best till last. I hope it works, Kevin. Yeah, I hope it works for you as well. Yeah. That was beautiful. Cheers. Here's to losing weight and putting weight on. Oh, bless. Back to our second swap. And after a couple of days on Stefan's diet, Elizabeth needs some time out and opts for her favourite pastime, dancing. This could be just what Stefan needs to win a few hearts back home. 
I'm gonna get you dancing. I have rhythm, I have rhythm. Look, 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 this body has rhythm. All right. Okay. That should make it easy then. All right. Cue the music. It's a little bit of freestyle. Yeah. Just put out to my Dancing is a great form of exercise. If Stefan was to dance for 30 minutes, he'd use 600 calories, the equivalent to a roast beef dinner. An average person weighing 10 stone would use 152 calories after 30 minutes of dancing. But if you've got two left feet, there are other ways to keep fit. A 10 stone person would use 95 calories doing 30 minutes of cleaning and 127 calories doing 30 minutes of gardening. There's no excuse to not exercise. <laughs> Concerned that his dance partner might be hungry after their workout, Stefan treats Elizabeth to one of his favorite snacks, a burger. I know how to get out a woman's heart, quite literally. And we have to give her a heart attack. Please, no more food offerings. Unfortunately for Elizabeth, only 60 minutes later, dinner arrives, and it's not small. It's a large portion of fish and chips. Had I not eaten everything else today, I would have been able to eat that, all of that. And for Stefan, time really is standing still as he faces another meal packed full of raw garlic. It's going to be a 10-mile sun around me in London with my breath. Mm -mm. I'm not going to be able to walk anywhere. <laughs> It's two full days now without caffeine, without the sugar, without the constant feed of food. I think it's just brought my emotions down a little and um, the normal sparky self has just been, it's just a little subdued. Things don't get any easier for Stefan and by dinner time he's famished and in urgent need of a decent meal. Perhaps something like he's served to Elizabeth, fish with cheesy potatoes. But no, it's more pasta with raw garlic. Mm. And for dessert, Stefan's got a bowl of high-fibre bran mixed with yoghurt and apple. And his goodwill is wearing thin. This here is like somebody who is constantly worried about their health, constantly worried about their See, that's, physical that's, health. This here is a concoction that's, that um, has been concocted. That's your opinion. Not, not um, sort of but like it's, it's an opinion that you're giving me no, because. But that's what you, that you don't know me because I am slim. Does it have to mean that I have an issue with food? Well, I'll allow you to have your fish and your Thank potatoes you. and peas analysed free. I'm not sure if I could cope with a, another dinner session like that. It's the final morning of the swap, and Stefan will not be sorry to see the back of the terrible trio. Oh, I, may, I may cry. I may cry through this. This has been one of the toughest emotional challenging journeys I have ever, ever faced in my life. The lifestyle that I left is and has to change in every aspect. I think I'm going to have to be more honest, more open, and more true to myself. Give me a high five. Last series, I went on an epic journey to find the ultimate weight loss solution. I was three weeks into my mission to get a model body, and so far I'd tried the apple diet, colonic massage, and even surgery. But to be honest, none of them floated my boat. So another thing on my agenda was diet pills. After I sifted through the vast array on offer, I decided to try Hoodia, a herbal supplement that promised to suppress my appetite. OK, it's not going to work. Bon appetit. Oh, already vile. So yesterday, all I had to eat was a banana. And today, all I've had to eat or drink is a cup of tea. So, nil by mouth, nearly. Whilst I've been researching the minefield that is a diet market, I found out about a very strange pill that made you lose fat in a rather unpleasant way. 46-year-old Denise Townsend has always struggled with her weight and at her heaviest was 32 stone. So she was prepared to try anything, even pills, that make you poo your fat. It gets rid of all the fat out of your body. It certainly does. You're sitting on the loo for the next few weeks while you take it. It's absolutely horrendous. 
So what comes out of your backside? You've, you know, like dishwater when you've cleaned your pans up, you'd have to make sure you didn't fart. <sighs> what would you poo yourself? Yes. No. Yes. While you were out and about? Yes. <gasps> Did that ever happen to you? Yes, it happens to them all. And even though I lost two pounds, after seeing what Dr Tony Moffat had to say about the plethora of diet pills on the market... If your heart will stop, you'll have a heart attack. ..I decided that pill-popping was not the way to a perfect body. So, on with the search. I tried the apple diet and failed, but I wondered what was the latest celebrity diet craze. I'd read about a diet that was rumoured to help Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon and Marsha Cross stay so slim. I was about to embark on the baby food diet. The idea is that I replace two out of three meals a day for the next week with a single pot of organic baby food. Delicious organic meals prepared with care using the finest ingredients, just like home cooking. No wonder mums prefer this. Now, these are not magic weight loss pots. The diet is supposed to work simply because each little jar only contains 82 and a half calories, which is less than a quarter of the recommended average grown-up lunch. So I reckon I can lose at least three pounds on this. It's not complete without the bib. OK, this is a real baby experience. This is a real Jennifer Aniston experience. I'm judging that this is what she does every day. Honestly, that is like I've taken a load of vegetables, eaten them, been sick, and then eaten them again. I can't understand why celebrities put themselves through this bizarre diet, but I suppose having your squidgy bits plastered all over the glossies every day would make you go to any lengths to stay in shape. To find out, I'm getting right into the shoes of a celebrity for the day by being papped. To further my investigation into what it's like being in the spotlight and under the microscope, I've hired celebrity snapper Max Chisotti. <gasps> I think we could call these how not to get out of a car. Not exactly ladylike, is it? Look, look no. have you ever seen my gussets? That's shocking. And this is why the celebrities shouldn't eat in public <sighs> when you're bending over to make sure that your trousers are pulled up. <laughs> There's not one nice picture. If I were a celeb and I was plastered all over magazines week in, week out, and I saw these pictures, I would be, I am, desperately upset. And I can totally understand why you, you could become obsessed. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh, that's a nightmare. I'm finding the baby food way of life hard to handle. That is absolutely revolting. You know when babies do this? I know why. There is a reason why babies are sick. It's this. They don't want to eat it anymore. And we're trying to shove it into their faces and they don't want it. And neither do I. I'm sure it's fine for nippers, but I think it's disgusting. I've been on the baby food diet for five days and I've lost two pounds, which is amazing, given that I'm so constipated. If I carry on at this rate, I'd be no, lucky no. if I did one poo a year. Oh, God. oh, See, my tummy really hurts. Seriously, please go away. Please go away. OK, me and baby food. <laughs> it's over! Finished! Please, somebody, somebody, phone up Jennifer Aniston and tell her. It's not enough food. So, halfway through my crazy journey and only half a stone down. Join me next time when I investigate if losing weight is all in the mind. How old are you? About nine. Kevin has completed his five-day diet swap and has been following Dr. Jessen's healthy eating plan for nine hey, weeks. Kevin, how are you? Nice to see you. His weigh-in with Dr. Jessen will reveal whether he's got himself up to a more healthy weight. Lovely. And you? He's reunited with diet swap partner Julie to share the results. So, Kevin, do you remember how much you weigh when I first met you? Um, 
I can't remember exactly, but it was eight something. Eight stone five. Now we've put on four pounds. You're eight stone nine. I, I, I am pleased, and it's a step in the right direction, and it's the continuation of it afterwards. He's also put three and a half inches on his waist and half an inch on each thigh. But has Kevin's feeding buddy, Julie, seen the benefits of a healthy diet plan and lost any weight? You're 24 stone 10. You've lost nearly two stone. One stone 10 pounds. Oh, what do you think of that? Shocked. What do you think? Well I think I've lost that much. That's, fantastic. That's nearly two stone you've lost. What it seems like is I've got two different people standing in front of me now. Doing this show made me realise that I did need to make some changes when I went home and that I can achieve it if I do persevere and try hard. Kevin and Julie tackled their new eating regimes and reaped the benefits. Let's hope Stefan and Elizabeth can do the same. They also returned to the clinic to find out. OK, guys, let's get down to the important bit, is whether you've lost or gained accordingly, yeah? So, Elizabeth, you've gone from 6 stone 2 to 6 stone 11. You're kidding me. You have put on nine pounds, which is phenomenal. I'm gobsmacked. What do you think of that, Stefan? You know, I didn't think it was that much. But for supersized Stefan, the key question is how much he's managed to shift. You were 34 stone nine. Mm -hmm. You're now 33 stone eight. Oh, that's fantastic. You've lost over a stone. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. Before, it was just the same old thing. Work, sleep, eat. I've had enough, and I'm never, ever, ever going back to the life that I was leading. Kevin and Stefan have followed the doctor's orders and have exceeded their own expectations. But a year down the line, have they kept on track or have their diet plans run off course? A year ago, we met super skinny Kevin and super-sized Stefan. They checked into the feeding clinic in order to put a stop to their dangerous eating habits. Their five-day diet swaps were tough going. Is it hitting home a bit? Yeah. But after following their healthy eating plans for three months, we saw Kevin pile on four pounds and Stefan lose an impressive 15 pounds. I've had enough and I'm never, ever, ever going back to the life that I was leading. So now, after a year on their plans, we're catching up with them at home to see if they've changed their eating habits for good and are living a healthier lifestyle. First, we'll join Kevin at home in Brighton. He's still holding down two jobs, but he's made some big changes since we last saw him. The last year's been really good in the fact that even though my weight keeps on fluctuating up and down, I feel healthier in myself from making sure that I do eat food properly. Kevin's biggest improvement has been to get three main meals into his busy day. Before the swap, um, I didn't have breakfast in the morning. I'd have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and, and a fag. Uh, but now I consciously make the effort to get up and try and have like some toast or some cereal or some crumpets or yoghurt just so that I've got something before I do go to work. Kevin still needs to learn about sitting down to eat, but at least he's enjoying his food now. Like I went for a carvery about a month ago and my bar manager, my best friend, turned around and actually said, can you actually fit any more on your plate? which probably a year ago, I wouldn't have been in that situation at all. And it's not just his appetite that's improved. Kevin's noticing other positive benefits from his new diet. I do feel better in, in the sense that I'm feeling more confident about my physique, I'm feeling more confident about my appearance. So a year ago, these jeans didn't used to fit me and they used to be really baggy on me. But I, now they, I, I fill them out and I don't need to wear a belt. And it feels really good to be able to wear clothes that actually do fit properly. And a lot of people say that my skin looks a lot healthier and a lot better since the swap. A year ago, Kevin lived on a mainly liquid diet and weighed into the feeding clinic at eight stone five pounds. Now he's put on a whopping ten pounds and is nine stone one. I do look back now and think, how did I survive on just orange juice for my evening meal? But I've come back and I've made the changes. I'm really proud of what I've achieved in the last year because I've gone away and I've re-evaluated my life and changed it for the better. 
I'm really impressed with Kevin because he's managed to totally change his lifestyle to fit in proper meals. He's increased his nutritional intake and he's no longer relying on coffee and fags for a quick fix. So I'm really impressed with how he's done. The second person we're catching up with is supersized Stefan. We join him at home in Northern Ireland. I really hope this show was the reality check that he needed and that he's kept on track with his weight loss. There we go, there we go. When I seen the food coming down that tube, I don't know, it must have been coming out of Narnia. It was just coming forever and ever and ever. But what you seen was what I ate. It was frightening. Life changing? Yeah. So Stefan has been given the wake up call he desperately needed. A year ago, Stefan weighed 34 stone 9 pounds. Now, with a healthier attitude towards his diet, he's lost nearly 3 stone. My weight now is 32 stone. First time in 15 years that I haven't put weight on in a year, that I have actually reversed the process, that weight has come off. Of course, it's, it's no world record, but it's a start. And for, for a guy who's been fighting his food addiction all his life, it's, it's just fantastic. It's, it's great. For Stefan, controlling his diet is a daily struggle. The massive change to that was stop eating big, disgusting sausage rolls and big, disgusting Northern Ireland bops. But I'm not saying the carbs didn't find me. The carbs have found me on many occasions and, you know, in, in, in times of weakness. Um, you know, I, I've been weak. Sure, I've been weak. But Stefan has shown real strength in motivating himself to get active again. I started to walk. Um, I walked around and I, I started to meet people I haven't seen in years. And all of a sudden, from a very reclusive social life, new friends were found. After all the changes he's made this year, Stefan is optimistic about the future. I want to be happy. And in my head, I know what I want. I want to have the confidence to go up to someone and say, hey, do you want to go for a drink? I want to have the confidence to go out and dress in beautiful, lovely clothes that, that fit. I can picture it. Can I do it? I hope so. Stefan's weight loss is really a remarkable achievement. He's gone away and addressed the issues that he had with food and made some essential changes that may actually have saved his life. The Super Size vs Super Skinny Take Control of Your Weight book is available to buy at channel4.com slash shop. On Thursday at 8, when your husband is mistaken for your toy boy, it's time for 10 years younger, the challenge. But back to tonight, and it's enough to have you quaking in your codpiece, Heston's Tudor Feast. <laughs>